No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today we have a legend on the show, DeAndre Bonds. How you doing, man? Man, so much shit popping right now. <laughs> the Choco, Choco bites. bites. <laughs> but I'm doing great other than that. So those man. are not edibles, but he, he said that his sugar was getting a little low, so he yeah. wanted to tap in with some sugar. So he, he chose these, which have like a pop rock thing mm. to it, instead of fucking with the Frosted Flakes, which nope. for me, you, you just don't like them or what? I love our but I don't want to promote something that ain't paying me. Oh, I don't know. We could have put it in a little cup for you or something, you yeah. know? Well, then I probably would put some milk in it. <laughs> Almond milk. This is just regular Costco water. We just throw the stickers on it because we were sick of having to rip the labels I off. I like that no jumper, though. The wettest water in the world, yeah. I'm going to pop that and drink that after this. The show. You got to stay hydrated. Got to, bro. You drink a lot of water? Not as much as I should, but mm. I do try. What else do you drink? Alcohol. A lot of that or a little bit? Um, not as much as I used to, but right. <laughs> you still tap in from time to time? Tap in, man. <laughs> Drink coffee? Uh, not as much as I used to, mm. but I like it. Energy drinks? Not so much. Okay. Because you could taste the, sh the sugary. Oh, yeah. It's not even sugar. You could taste that it's not sugar. That's like a fucking garden hose of sugar to your brain. Bush, yeah. Shit just hits you. But I fuck with it up. You know? <laughs> yeah, definitely. So how, how's life? How's everything going for you these days? Man, life is great. God is great. You know, I'm just manifesting my destiny. Right. Building it. Right. No, nah, I mean, it, it, it's dope to see how far everything has come for you and everything. I feel like, you know, a lot of people probably wrote you out at one point, wrote you off at one point. And to see your career doing well and you having this kind of resurgence and everything with snowfall and everything has been pretty cool to witness. Absolutely. It's been great to to be in it. I always knew I was gonna get the get back. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You take a stumble, you fall, you get the fuck up and you keep going. And I knew I would do that and I'm doing it. Right. Snowfall is a blessing. Thank God for John Singleton recognizing and um, loving my talent right. as an artist and giving me an opportunity. Excuse me for smacking. <laughs> my sugar a little low. No, it's good. You smoke weed? I do. A lot or a little bit? Middle. <laughs> Middle amount every day? Um, not every day, but probably every two other day or something. Right. It depends on if I need an appetite. Um, if I'm, I re, I like um, the, the 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 new stuff they got in the vapor pen. Oh, you like those? Man, mm. that's that's better for me than uh, smoke. Right. Yeah, I don't like the the hardness of the smoke. It right. Makes you choke. That's why I got fucked up. I got into smoking weed with tobacco at a certain point, and now I can't smoke weed without tobacco. Really? Yeah, spliffs or blunts. I've never I really never, been able to be a joint guy. I never heard of weed and tobacco mix. What are you talking about? That's what a blunt is. No, the blunt is the 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 the, the tobacco leaf. Oh, it is, huh? <laughs> God damn. <laughs> That's crazy. I never even saw it like that. Really? Damn. I just, you know, I like marijuana. I love marijuana. I love, right. you know, I, I hit a cigarette when I'm loaded, mm. you know, tobacco, not too much. Right. But I will smoke. And, um, yeah, man, you know, these edibles and this, this new shit with the vape pens. Right. I love that shit, man. Yeah. The Long edibles... Oh, I love edibles. That's a whole too. different level of getting high. And I don't never get high off edibles. You I, don't? I don't feel it. Really? I just think maybe um I could I chew it, but it don't affect me the way the real marijuana like blowing it. Really? Or vaping it. Yeah, no, edibles, I'm I could eat all kind of fucking edible. I didn't eat 
packs of edibles. Right. And didn't even know I was high. Wow. That's impressive. <laughs> but I don't know. People People always, I've known some girls throughout my life who say, yeah, I'll do hella coke. And I don't even, it doesn't do anything to me. I'm like, <laughs> all right. I don't know. <laughs> I've done coke and that shit did something hella to me. Hella coke. i never done coke. Really? Ever. No. I mean, man, you be never walking around, snorted, never feeling like you got an S on your chest off that shit, bro. I, I've heard of. It's a lot. I know a lot of people that done it, mm. snort like powder, but right. I've never tried it. <laughs> I mean, probably now is not a good time to tap in. It's more of a nah, more nah. of a young man's sport. Forty six. I'm forty six, so I'm a little conservative now. Yeah, you got to be. So what's up, Adam? I <laughs> at me, man. Hey, man. You want to you go back in time? You want to talk about the, the early days of what it was like coming up in L.A.? Absolutely. Tell me, tell me about it. Fill me in. Well, shit, I, it used to be super crazy. Like, mm. everybody getting, going through drive-by, shooting. I remember one day I was on Broadway and just a youngster. Motherfucker pulled up and dumping on the person right in front of you. Boom, 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 boom. But this shit went on everywhere. I got shot three times and I ain't never banged, never sold drugs. I ain't never did none of that shit. But Just I, being in the wrong place, wrong, wrong time? Wrong place, wrong time, bro. In the era, in the time. Because it's crazy, like, the past year or two, there's been a spike in murders in L.A. and shit. But then if you look back in time to the 90s on the chart of, like, how many people got killed each year, it is up here. And then that, and then it goes down to, like, here. And now we're on a little bit of an uptick, but it is nothing compared to what it was like it's in the 90s. It's so different right now. And, and that's great for the people and the community and the children. Yeah. Because back in that my time, they didn't give a fuck about the community, the people, or the children. Mm. It was, if you was in that that hood, you was from there. Right. They didn't give a fuck or somebody coming through and they bust. That's right. it, bro. And it was scary, sad. I ducked so many bullets. I don't know how I, I'm still here. Right. I, mean, I feel like anybody who lived through that, you got to kind of feel like you're here for a reason. Absolutely. You have to be. Because mm. the only way you made it through that was for a high from a high power protecting you. Right. Watching over you and your people. You know what I mean? So I can understand that better now right. by going through it. Since uh, uh, experiencing it and at the same time coming through it and seeing the other side. Mm. You know, like, oh, yes, this is why. Like you said, you got a purpose, man. Right. And we do. Right. So your faith has never wavered over the years? It's always stayed with you since since you were young, or has it changed over time? My faith has never wavered. Mm. Always been in me, and I've always had, I've always had faith. You know, I've been through so much, man. Mm. Been shot three times, did 12 years in prison, um, and made it through all this. My mother was, you know, my father was on uh, drugs. Right. We survived that, the 80s, the epidemic of that, you know what I mean? And the homelessness, sleeping in cars and shit like that, man. How the fuck can I not be faithful? Right. So you got that from your mom? Like, is your is your version of God the same as what your mom and well, your, your parents it taught you? Started off with my mom. Right. However, my experiences and my seeking, and knocking, and searching on my own, and and, and evolving and growing showed me who God is. Mm. And, you know, now I have a better understanding. Right. I heard you talk about this topic, though, and it didn't seem like you really identify with a specific religion. I don't have a religion. I'm spiritual. However, 
my religion, that means to, like, to me is me, you know? I, I am a God. I'm not the God. And religion separates and takes away from you knowing yourself. You know what I mean? Who are you? That's the 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 the, the spirituality, the, the, the power is within you. So once I came to understand that, you know, I know now. Right, for sure. So was when did you feel? Like, I thought it's one of the most important inflection points for any young guy is. When do you feel like you started to really go from a boy to a man? Like, when did the world force you to start really growing up? It started at a young age for me because I didn't have, you know, my father wasn't there. My mother had um, children, you know, by different men. Right. And I was the oldest, so I had to be a, a, a man at an early age. Cause we didn't have that. My mother was on drugs. I had to pump gas, sell candy, bring f- money home to make sure, <laughs> you know, we ate. And, you know, that was probably around my whole adolescence, mm-hmm. my whole childhood. Right. So when you were selling candy, when I heard you talking about that on the Vlad interview, I was really thinking about how when I had a store on Melrose, mm-hmm. always be some dudes selling candy on the block, you know? Like, I've just always, there's always been that dude around. And even still, like, when I'm going somewhere and I see some kid who wants a photo or whatever and they're selling candy, I always find that kind of inspirational because that's like a, a real ground level hustle. Hustle. You know? Real life. And they and they out there really doing it. Mm-hmm. And um, that was my number one hustle. Like, right. I pump gas first. And then later on, when I got older, I could jump on the bus from L.A., go to Hollywood, go to 99 cent store, buy me $20 worth of candy, 99 cents a piece, sell them each for $5. And come home after that and give my mama the money. Right. You know what I mean? And like, mom, I got this. And, and, and it showed me something that I was good at. And, you know, I was a hustler, you know, in the right way, bro. Right. Were you spending all the money at that time, or were you trying to stack? I was saving it to the weekend to go skating. <laughs> but my mom, you know, I made sure my mom got money every day. Mm. So what I did with my money was save it to the weekend, go to the swap meet, Slauson, get some clothes, go skating. And, you know, that was... Ordinary. It was every every weekend, every day, bro. That was my right. my guy. That's how I met my agent, selling candy. The, yeah, I heard that. That's so. That's that was what it was to, if you wanted to impress a girl in that time period, you had to uh, take them to the the roller skating rink. Not back then. You just had to look good. Mm. You know what I mean? Back then, it was like it was different than it is now. And they wasn't so materialistic mm. it, it was your personality your, your your charisma how you deal with them you can get any you know if you had it you had it if you didn't you didn't right now shit's all fucked up girls want to see the nice car the fancy mm. shoes <laughs> Man, I ain't got none of that <laughs> you don't fuck with all that materialistic like, shit hell no you never been no, like that no really I've never been materialistic I guess because you didn't really have shit coming up. Mm. So when you did get it, it wasn't as much as it is to everybody else. But that, to a lot of people, that those are the people who end up being the most materialistic is people who grew up with nothing and then they got a million dollars. It's like they want the nicest of everything because they didn't have it. A lot of times when I say that I don't give a fuck about cars or having nice clothes or whatever, people would be like, yeah, but you're white and you grew up in the suburbs, <laughs> so that's why you don't care about. Because you know, you look at like Bill Gates or whoever, they dress super what fucking about simple. What Warren Buffett? Yeah, but he dresses like a bum too, right? Absolutely, because he, <laughs> you know what I mean. But it, it, that's the way it is. Yeah, that's how I came. I'm like, you know, I, I get a little bit now. That shit don't mean nothing to me. Right. You know what I mean? What means something to me is the mind, the, the way a person thinks, the 
personality, mm. the spirit. You know, that's valuable. Right. That's priceless. So I'm I, I know that now. Mm. But I didn't know, you know, coming up, you you had to go through that type of shit to understand that now. Mm. So if you haven't been through nothing, you're not gonna appreciate nothing. I wanna hit that blunt. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we could have somebody roll your book. No, yeah. no, I take that one. Slide it to me, Adam. <laughs> he, said, he said, Riley, Adam, hand it look, over. I got Adam Riley, blessing me, me, man. On the set, man. It's just a roach, my friend. Man, I don't care. That's enough. That's all I need. Any more than that, it don't matter. Hey, it has some tobacco in it. Just in case. Oh, that's now I'm Riley, hooked. If you wanna... Riley, now I'm roll, hooked. Roll yourself one and roll him one. Hold up. Hold up. This is what you was talking about with the tobacco and yes. the weed? This shit cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. You like hook me on some new stuff. Damn, you right? got Yuri's girl right, right rolling your this joints. This ain't That's Bugler, cool. is it? Uh, I'm not sure. What are you no. using, Bugler? No. We use the American Spirits. Mm. That's that good shit. Woo. This is Wow. Don't ash in the ash in the it's ashtray. You got okay. ash in the, bad, bro. In the bad. Bad. You're gonna keep eating those. <laughs> you right. My oh, sugar man. better now. Legendary. Um, yeah, because one thing I was thinking about is whenever I see or I hear about like NBA players and rappers and they're spending you know 20k in the club in a night, and I'm just like, bro, like there's gonna come a day. Where that 20 20K, 20 k 20K, that's what I said. AD that's, talks about this shit like it's normal a, to me. That's a business. That's what I'm saying. That's a startup. That's, that's what like a teacher makes in a year. Maybe maybe a little more, but I mean, shit. No, you, that's fucked up. I know. A teacher. Out right? of all people, the ones that teach us how to be and bring out who we are. Right. Get the less. I know. Get, that's sad. I don't know, and, and, and you never hear anybody being like, we should pay the teachers more. I think we should pay the teachers the most. Yeah, that would be nice. But fuck the pastors. That's why we got all these weird-ass teachers. They all got blue I mean, hair and shit. If you get the right teachers, if they get the right money, they would do the best. Mm. You know what I mean? You are, we are, well, let me just be quiet. No, I feel you. Um, but okay, so you were doing your candy thing and everything. Was that was your mentality on I'm staying out the streets, I'm not getting in trouble, I'm not trying to be somebody who's who's gonna end up in jail? Like do you, you would Absolutely. you say you had your head on your shoulders straight at that time? Yeah. All um all my life, you know, after seeing and growing up amongst and in it and in the midst of it, it it showed me what I don't wanna do. Mm. So I started to, you know, focus on what I wanted to do. What is my dream? Where do I want to go? What do I want to, who do I, what do I want to be? Mm. And um, that's how I, you know, ultimately got into acting because that was my dream. Had, had acting even entered your mind before you met your agent or, or how did that transform? No, no, no. Um, acting has been a dream of mine. I was like. Well, what made you want to act? Watching movies. Which um, ones? The Goonies. <laughs> uh, the Never in This Story, man. Don't laugh at me, but these <laughs> no, opened up it. my mind to imagination, and <laughs> right. imagining things, and and I after that, and just the the feelings it produced in me. Mm. You know what I mean? Seeing these things. You know, say my name. You know what I mean? <laughs> Real right. life, man. And I start speaking things. I said, I want to be an actor. I'm going to be an actor. Really? I went from I want to to I will, I'm going to be. What steps were you taking to get there, though, before you actually ended up meeting this agent? The steps that. Um, were you, were would, you training? I or? was just growing You, you just up. wanted to. Right. Yeah, I just had that dream, and, you know, I was doing the right thing. I wasn't robbing, I wasn't killing, I wasn't stealing, I wasn't, you know, in the streets necessarily the way that other people were mm -hmm. amongst me, my cousins, my friends, other niggas that I, excuse my language, you Go know crazy. what I mean? It's YouTube. 
real life, bro. Um, and um, just staying away from that and focusing on getting money, taking care of my family the right way, selling candy, pumping gas. I was on the right path, and God was always there guiding me long as I stayed right. And he introduced me to an agent selling candy, bro. Right. And I, I never knew she was an agent, Mimi Meyer. I used to go up in her office on Sunset Boulevard every day, and she would always say no, no, no. <laughs> so she, she was a candy prospect. No, before. she was an agent. She right. had an office. I used to go in there, but. You were trying to sign ca- candy to the office. I was trying to sell candy to, and, and so, didn't know she was an agent. Right. So I was just. But then what? Con, one one uh, day she says, "You're a good looking persistent. guy. You got a good personality. Nah, you could be an actor." No, I went in her office as I do did every day, and um, she was on the phone. Mm. So I sat down because the office was open. You can just go in, mm. you know. And I seen her on the phone. I sat down, and. I, I was what, looking at the, uh, the pictures on the wall, and you know I was paying more close attention than other than selling candy to her. Right. And she was talking on the phone about a commercial. And um, when she got off the phone, I was like, Mimi, um, Mimi, I don't mean to, you know, be nosy, but what, what do you do, commercials? Uh-huh. And she was like, No, I'm an agent. Right. I represent actors that do commercials. And when she said that, it was over, bro. I was like, you are an agent? This is what everybody <laughs> was telling right. me I need. Yeah. You need an agent. Get an agent. Get an agent. Every, every time I ask, how do you how you how do you get an agent? Get an agent. Get an agent. And when she said she was an agent, bro. I said, that's my dream. I've always wanted to be an actor. And you are an agent. I want to be an actor. Right. She thought I was joking. She said, if you serious, take this IHOP uh, commercial sides, you know, for a commercial for IHOP, Mm -hmm. go out in the hallway, come back in and do it. Mm -hmm. And I promise you, bro, I went out there, read that about 15, 20 minutes. 15 minutes, went back up in her office, did it live for her, and she took me, man. She saw the vision. She she took me and... <laughs> and so from then, it was just on? It was on. The first audition I ever went on was for a miniseries called South of Sunset with Aerie Spears. Right. And um, first time. Had him went on the podcast recently. Gang song? of people, bro. Right. Sitting at a big ass table when you walk in. I never been through this. Right. I'm looking at it like. And I I, I did it live and got the part. Really? First audition. Where do you think your your natural ability to do this came from? Like you hadn't even really practiced or you, it's not like you studied or talked to anybody. It was just in you? Within me, bro. Like, like everything is already within you. It's up to you to want what you want to to manifest. And I didn't know that back then, <coughs> but I do now. Right. You feel me, Adam? Yeah. Double deuce. <laughs> That's what they call me. Real life. Real shit. What What was it like when you uh, ran up on Tupac trying to sell him candy? You. <laughs> He wasn't the Tupac that we know now. Okay. So it was like he was Tupac. You know, oh, that's Tupac. Right. You know what I mean? But you recognize him, and I was, you know, yeah, he he was hot at that moment. Mm-hmm. Like, that, he put out the un, uh, uh, rounding, round, round, mm-hmm. we go, the underground, yeah. just don't stop. So he was hot, and, you, you know, our ears was to the streets. I seen him, I was like, man, hey, Pac, what's up, man? I'm selling candy, you know, basically. And he was like, no, I don't want no candy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and he lit up a joy. He was blowing. I knew the smell of marijuana, even though I wasn't smoking back right. then. And uh, 
I was like, well, I could rap. And he was like, well, I already got a rap group. Mm. I was like, fuck you then. <laughs> That's what you said? I told Park, man, I promise you. I did. Were you even really trying to rap at that point? You were I trying was, to... hell yeah, okay. I, was, I was trying to do everything at that point. I, that's what I was, what, 15, right. 16? That's when you hot, like, you, you ambitious. Right. You, I, I want to do any motherfucking thing I can do. Right. So you said, fuck you, Tupac? I said, fuck. I mean, you know, it was just like I'd have told anybody that back then. Sixteen, right. I was wilding too. I, I, man, I fuck you. What was his response? Because this was before he, he went full thug life, oh, right? Oh, my mama, man! <laughs> his response was, he laughed. He really? just, <laughs> that's what he. That's his response. I mean, you're a young kid. Yeah, where you gonna, where you gonna beat your ass? Yeah, yeah. man. I mean, I mean, he probably would have, cause I didn't got into <laughs> it with a gang of motherfuckers out there selling candy. Really? Not pot. Like, right. Like, you just, just end up people. squabbling random people. Hell yeah, it's crazy out there on <laughs> Sunset, man. Yeah. Damn. Legendary. Um. Okay, so then you you start uh getting. Consistent ex, work. The, ca- no. the candy shit's done as soon as you get your first job. Soon as I did um, the the first audition that I booked, man, it was on. Mm. I was going out for everything. Right. I didn't sell candy no more. You're doing commercials and movies at the same time. Commer- whatever opportunity, the, the, whatever audition my agent sent me on, and if, if I booked it, commercials pay better too, mm. especially. Uh, international commercial. Okay. Just keep that in mind. But look, real life, man. I just start going for auditions. I find I I got an audition for Tales from the Hood. Mm-hmm. First movie. Right. Ever. And um, I wind up getting it. Right. And I never looked back. I was doing movie after movie. Tales from the Hood, Sunset Park, get on the bus, three strikes, lockdown. The wood, imperial dream. You know what I mean? Are you financially? Are you living like movie to movie, or are you really stacking money from doing these roles? I am financially living like Allah blessed me to live. <laughs> okay. And it has nothing to do with everything I want. I got. I just wonder because I don't know how much you actually make nah, when nah, you're, nah. you're new yeah, in the game I, like I, that. I, back then, yeah. Oh, it oh. was. It was black. I never made money like that back then. I was making like a thousand a day. Whew. That's a lot of candy. I mean, for especially for a seventeen year old by now, eighteen. Right. You know what I mean? Is, are you like fully just famous all of a sudden when you just get recognized everywhere and shit, or did nah, it take a while to kick in? Nah, not back then. But if they if they knew you, they knew you. Right. If they went to the premiere and saw the movie afterwards, they recognize you. Right. And um, but it's like every role you do, it's like a fucking snowball, right? Like you just keep getting time. a bigger, bigger name. Yeah. Mm. And the uh, only time I really recognized that was after I did nine years, seven months. Once I did that time and got out, the whole world. Youth, people that didn't even see the movie 10 years ago. They wouldn't even, you know what I mean? Everybody just love you, man. They recognize you. You like, damn. Then it hit me. It took about 12, 13 years. Right. Of continuous work before people really started to. I was reading this Will Smith quote where he was saying that there's very different levels of fame. Like when you're a, on a TV show, like he was consistently, that was a different type of fame where people felt like they knew him. Then he becomes movie star famous, and he said that it became like he was a fucking god to people where they couldn't even believe they were seeing him. It was like a completely different type Bro, of fame. I don't understand how or why that is. 
He's saying some real shit. Mm. Cause that's like people will um try to treat you that way. Right. However, we all gods and we all goddesses. So mm. we should all treat one another that way. Right. Cause everybody serves a purpose. Right. So him knowing that, but this is on some movies, not no TV. Mm. TV, like, yeah, 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 yeah. People, like, yeah, we <laughs> see you all the time. We right. see you every day. Yeah. Movie, they like, damn, you doing something different. Then they don't see you in that. Or they, they want to see you again in that. You know what I mean? And it's, they do have the te- tendencies to try to treat you crazy. Mm. You be like, man, I'm just like you. So once you get that level of, you're, you're, you're getting more and more famous and everything, would you say that you started living crazy? Like, did you start falling into the trappings of money and success, or did you keep your head screwed on straight? No, money and success. Really? Yeah, you know, because I, I, I was, you got to remember, I didn't have no guidance at that time. Mm. And I'm growing up with no guidance, getting money, doing big people recognizing you as, you know, famous and you are becoming famous mm. with no guidance so i was like the homies and me and my niggas we again we was that was my guy i was guiding myself with who i wanted to guide myself with mm. and at the same time we was thug life like you know Pac was number one everywhere and we young and feeling ourselves, man, and having a little this and shit happens. Mm. And then you crash and but, you have to pay the consequences. But you you still kept your head on straight enough that you were able to book more and more roles and continue your career and everything, even if you were kind of... Yeah. What was your advice at the time? You just partying, drinking, girls? Uh, clubbing, mm. girls, just out. Um, smoking, you know what I mean? Marijuana, drinking. About 22, 23, 24. You didn't get into like hard drugs? No, no, never. Mm. I, I was, I respected my um, observation of people to use that. Right enough to say I'm not gonna do that and my mother used mm. hard drugs before so and she's been clean 30 years now so it's like <clears throat> man I know the effects of that shit but at that time I would imagine that in Hollywood you're seeing a shit load oh, of people man. doing cocaine oh, and stuff all the time right yeah yeah, yeah. I just was blessed enough mm. and protected enough to not want that shit mm. man what do you mean did i see that i saw a lot of that shit right cocaine <laughs> and you know but that, that that i don't remember you know that's neither here nor there now right well it was for a purpose to learn and, and prepare me and, and show me what not to do mm. and why not to do right definitely in in the lead up to the situation that ended up getting you locked up, where where would you describe what your mental space was? Like, were you in a good place, or were you kind of wilding out? I was beautiful, bro. I was I, I was I wasn't doing too much, right? Wilding, you know. I get into little physical altercations and things like that in the club because what whatever it may whatever the reason may be. But it wasn't like I was a danger to myself or the people around me. Cause mm-hmm. you know, we was just chilling. We was having fun. I was still booking roles. I just booked a movie with Denzel. Right. Uh, Antoine Fisher. And um, I was in a happy place. You know what I mean? I'm like, man, now I got one with Denzel. And,
one thing led to another, man. I was at the wrong place at the wrong time. Right. I don't like speaking too much about this because, you know, I, I wrote about it already mm. in my um, autobiography. However, it was just like I was in a beautiful place. Bro. I was right there. Right. I was at the I was at the apex, and you know, it wasn't time. Right. So I feel like the, the Almighty brought me back down to earth, in the, in the in the way that He can um, get my attention. Right. You know, I'm mean? I'm sure this is something you've thought about a million times, but. When you look back on that situation now and you look back at the amount of, you know, the, the, the act that you did to this guy and everything, did you end up, like, did, you felt justified in doing that at that time? Like, as you think about it all these years later, do you feel like you acted irrationally or do you, do you still kind of feel like that was a justifiable response? It wasn't me that was acting on anything, I guess, irrationally, or him. You know what I mean? What happened, happened. Mm. And it wasn't planned. Um, I think it could have. I, I didn't have, like, no control in that narrative of how I would want it to be. Cause mm -hmm. I would have just, you know, like, man, come on, come on, man, you know what I mean? But it wasn't like that. That energy that was coming toward me wasn't like that. It was negative mm -hmm. and it was bent on hurting me. Right. So, and I had, you know what I mean? Right. Um. If, if it could be done different than what I would have wanted to be, absolutely. I I don't I didn't I don't wield this on nobody. But but you only did what you had to do because of the fact that you felt like you had to do it, right? Like you felt like you were in in a danger. No, I was I was in imminent danger. People, I was knocked down twice. Right. What I was, and then here come the third time. Hmm. want to move on from that. For sure, yeah. I mean, if people want to hear the full breakdown, it's out there. Yeah, you know, they, they can, can find yeah, it. Yeah, they can read my book. Right. But so, okay, where was your headspace at as you are preparing to go in and, and, and well, I mean, you get locked up right away. You never bailed out before you no, ended up no, doing no. your sentence? What was my headspace? I was about to do a movie with Denzel. That mm. was my headspace. Right. I'm thinking this is all a dream. Right. And it wasn't. It was reality. When it happened, did you feel like the people around you, I mean, people always say that Hollywood is fake. Did you feel like people around you turned on you or did you feel like people were loyal to you? I mean, I wasn't even thinking about that. Mm. I was just some other thoughts in my own self and about what's going on and a lot, you know what I mean? Not only about me, but about him, mm. you know what I mean? This shit was real. This wasn't nobody that I had issues with, or you know what I mean? But it's like, man, my head was in, I'm in a county jail like first degree premeditated murder. That's where my head was at. Mm. I wasn't tripping off my career. I wasn't tripping off. I I had I had my I was tripping on my family and my life. That's it. Right. Like man, how the fuck did this happen? Mm. Where, when, 
who planned this shit? Did that impact your faith? Or was there ever a moment where you really started to question what Man, you believe in? Man, that, 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 that intensified my faith. Really? Absolutely. Magnify my faith because I'm in there, man, and I know I ain't supposed to be in there for what? What happened? Why man. did he, you know what I mean? But it's neither here nor there with that. What it is is this I need to know what's going to happen in my future. Mm. Please let me know. Pray, cry beg for forgiveness, all that. Genuinely, from my gut, mm. from my soul. And went to sleep in the county jail and got the answers to everything. Really? Real life. I don't even want to go into that right now. Mm. I mean, I'm talking about visual through, like, Woke up. Man, it was, uh, it's in my book. Mm. So when you end up, so you end up doing nine and a half years or so? Yes, sir. Um, wh What do you do to even try to begin to, you know, think about this as you're settling in there? Like, like how do you, how do you prepare yourself for like, what, 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 what do you have to do to your mind to, to get through this? I've never, uh, mind you, I've never been to prison. Right. I did like some county time for like you know, a day or two, a week, or got a lucky seven, you know what I mean? But to all of a sudden go from where I was at in my spirit, in my mind, in my dreams, to that. Mm. Oh man, there's no way to prepare for that. <clears throat> you just gotta. Just gotta take it day by day. <laughs> yeah, and it's not funny. It's just like sad that a motherfucker don't got a blueprint mm. for that. Right. On how to get through something like that or or if something, oh, man, you just got to go through it. What what ended up helping you get through it though? Like what what where where did you have to keep your mind at in order to be able to my faith, man. You mm. know, I I got it was a point where I uh was shaking, shook and I, you know, I was like, I didn't think God was real. You know what I mean? I was like, fuck God. Yeah, I really was thinking that. And then Katrina happened. I'm in prison. I'm doing all this time for no reason. I'm a great dude. I live my life the way I was supposed to be living it and then all this shit. So it's like, man, I got mad at God. I was like, man, it can't be no God. Because if it is, why is all these people black in Louisiana fucked off? Why am I fucked off? That's where they saying you? This is what I'm saying to God. Oh. If you real, why is all my people fucked off? Right. And, um, uh, I got so mad, and then, you know, God revealed himself to me. And not only that, he showed me who I am. Mm. Like, you a God, <laughs> you right. a baby God, you God, you my son. Towards the end of the sentence, how, how'd you feel? Or like, w w I was how did, super. Were you, was it, are you I, nervous? Like, it doesn't even feel real that you might be able, like, how long in advance did you know? Um, that you were getting out? Is it like six months where you know yeah, that you're basically... When you, by 2008, I was ready to get out. I got out, I mean, I got out in 2011. That was my date, but you start preparing for that in advance. You know what I mean? Right. You know, so it was like, 
And by the time when it was time to hit, I was doing, I was working out all night, couldn't sleep. Mm. It was on my cell phone, you know. How I, well, I was renting one from somebody else at that time. Right. And, uh, you know, just anxious, man. Super excited for another chance, another opportunity to see my family, be with my family, take care of my family. Uh, and get up out that that place, man. That place is 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 a, it's a it got a lot of beautiful minds in it, mm. and it got a lot of wicked demonic minds. In right. It. And it's like you don't know who who is until you have to open up your your own space in order to to see that shit. Right or observe from a distance, but to get away from that environment was the best. I, I won't go back. When you were locked down, thinking about what you were gonna do when you got out, what, what was the stuff that you were thinking about? I was thinking about getting back into what I love to do. That never left, that never, determination? No, 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 I was right, I wrote my book in there. Yeah. So it's like, I was thinking about, cause you know, I, I I I didn't associate myself with a lot of what went on in there. You know what I mean? I stayed to myself and did what I wanted to do, and I made sure it was all in respect to you know my dreams, my present, and my future. You know what I mean? My now, my present, and my future. Mm. And I, was, I stayed in tune with that, man. And I was ready to get the fuck out of there. I was working out. I was, you know, I stopped eating meat for like three years. Mm. Uh, you know, I was just doing a lot of me. For sure. Did you ever, we, we, what was your mentality in your career, though? Because... I got to admit that I was kind of surprised when I realized that you were able to make such a return to acting right away because, I don't know, sometimes I think that the fucking industry might have wanted to just blacklist you or write you out of history <laughs> for that kind of thing. Like, that's pretty impressive that you've been able to book a shitload of roles since then, right? I mean, you Was that know, something you were worried about? No, I never was worried about that, and I'm still not worried about that. Right. I know who I am, and I know what my 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 want is and my gift and my passion is so acting is you know that's how I get my paper that's what I how I express myself that's how I let go of all that negative energy and 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 express that positive energy right you know what I mean so it's like man that's that motherfucker right there that acting shit is real mm. you know what I mean was music something you were thinking about while you're locked up too? Because you put out some music when you came out, right? Yeah, I went to the studio and recorded some things. I rolled up in there, and you know, music. I was I was doing music at a young age as well. Before acting, I was rapping. Right. But it never manifested itself the way that I wanted it to. Mm. Enough, I guess it wasn't quick enough and right. beneficial enough. So I left it alone and just stuck with, it. you know, acting. What What did you do? Like, you get out of prison. What's like the first week like? Fast. Yeah. Fucking fast, bro. Fast, like running around, seeing a million different no, people. No, no, and... not me. The people. Right. Is everybody just moving in it? Mm, your family, you see your people and. They want to take you out. They want to, you know, and, but it's like, in there is slow. You know mm. what I mean? Like, you got to be careful. You can't. Every do. day is the same. Yeah, much. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know your program. You know where to be, how to be, what you're going to do. Out there, it's just like everything happening. Your motherfuckers coming and going and moving and, and, uh, Thank God I, you know, that was the hardest thing, just the pace. Really? Yeah, bro. 
And but after like a few months, shit starts slowing down. Right. Is there any part of you that like when you first get out, mate, you don't want to necessarily just dive in head first to doing all this stuff because you're almost like scared of what could happen if you just fully embrace your freedom? Or are you just no fuck this? Like you well, you running around parole. doing everything. I was on parole right. for like three years, so you gotta be mindful of that. It's a lot of shit you can't be around and do. Right. And uh, I'm not worried about nothing because you know I know who I am. Like mm. real life. Once you know, you say I am who I am. You ain't gotta worry about nothing. Right. There's a video on YouTube that's like says it's your first day out you're like at a magazine stand and this guy like walks up you know the camera but it feels like you knew that this was about to happen right yeah yeah Yeah, okay uh was that actually your first day out that was my first day out you just went straight to this magazine stand and filmed this little video with this dude yeah man you know (laughs) motherfucker trying to just get some uh uh, <laughs> some views, right? Let a motherfucker know you out, man. That's all. I mean, that's smart. You know what I mean? You know, you come out and you know you, social media, yeah, and get yeah, right into it, bro. I didn't know nothing about that. This is people that knew that surround me, that right? You know, to help me. How do you feel about the way that being a celebrity has changed where now social media is such a big part of it? Doing stuff like this is a big part of it. It's I not just it's, like you do a movie and that's it. It's terrible. Bro. It's terrible. Because <laughs> <laughs> the art, that's not art. Right. You know, I'm not saying everybody are, is, is not creative and can express themselves. What I'm saying now is like... <laughs> You done opened the floodgates to everybody's a super actor Mm. or a rapper or a twerker (laughs) or or a writer. Right. And don't even know how to spell or (laughs) dance. Right. (laughs) It's kind of diluted. It's crazy, bro. Yeah. I see shit. I be like, oh, my. Everybody doing the same thing. You're not doing TikTok dances or anything? No, hell no. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> I mean that that's that's what it is to be famous these days, right? That's what that's what all these rappers and artists are bitching See, about is that the labels are forcing them to do TikToks. I'm not mad if that was for like the little teenage, mm-hmm. like like from a certain age to a certain age. But for grown ups to be copying the <laughs> And then you got the babies, man. No, no, that shit. Everybody do the same thing. They're gonna have a challenge. Here go, here go the challenge. Yeah, it's all about challenge. Everybody gotta do the same dance. Same thing. Yeah. I ain't never been in one of them. T- the, the first one I saw, the ice bath challenge. I remember that, yeah. Man, are you serious? That was when that kind of thing seemed like new and interesting. It now did. it's like all every fucking artist is trying to make this to fucking promote their new song or whatever. It's like we get it. Who gives a fuck? I mean, I, with the ice bath, there's some commitment. And, you know, you got to take a the, bucket of ice to ice. the head. That shit sucks. Oh, 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 oh. At least you're doing something. Now that it's just shit like cold hey, too. Yeah, just do this, do that. Yeah, oh, man, whatever. Yeah. Weird it's world. crazy, bro. Yeah, it, it's terrible. Right. So, <clears throat> how how did the snowfall roll change your life? How'd you find out about it? Um, I've been, I've known, I I heard about snowfall. Well, I first learned about snowfall when I was in prison. Really? Yeah. And so but, then you get out and you get this role relatively quickly. Um. I had some connects with John Singleton. That's my brother, Mr. Singleton. You know, rest in peace. Yeah. Had you stayed in touch with him while you were locked down? Uh, he stayed in touch with me. Really? So yeah. that that was him, like, holding you down, looking out for you all those years later. That's actually fucking amazing. Well, it wasn't like we just talked all the time. Man. Right, but I mean. He sent me texts, or, or, or not texts, but emails, mm. and we met on the set of the woods. Right. You know, so he had saw me do a scene and he was like, man, you know, you, I got something for you. And this was way back in 90s. You know what I mean? Right. 
and I think it was Baby Boy to, right. to, cause, to put the math together, but I wound up going to prison, so I missed out on that. Right. And, uh, but then for him to still look out for you at a time when you needed it all those years later? That's how real he is. That's a, the realest shit ever. As a man, bro. Mm. As a person. That's just how genuine and he want to see everybody win and want to win. If right. you want to win and you got that resilience in you and you got that drive, why not? Right. And he was just a catalyst. And I love him. Mm. for that man you know what i mean as soon as i got out you know it didn't, it didn't happen overnight to you know patience is the virtue and then some came up and he was like you want to read for this part mm. i was like you know i do it's like all right and he brought me in i read for the executive producers him his 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 um business partners and the directors and they they hired me, man. Right. I got they called me that day on my birthday, March nineteenth, uh, two thousand like two thousand two thousand twenty. Okay. Yeah. Right. So why did fifty end up taking shots at you? Oh man, my bro fifty, man. I don't know, man. Fifty, he is one of the greatest Biggest men and 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 artists of all time. You know slash I mean? entertainer, slash entertainer. troll. He's all, he, I mean, I don't even know what the troll is. I troll just, is good. It's good. Yeah, you know. Well, I mean, I, the way he trolls is is good. He, he knows <laughs> it. it's not like it's a secret that he's out here manipulating the fucking shit and making people do respond and do crazy. You know, he's just out here. He loves he loves to find somebody life, to just sort bro. of like. He ping him on the head over that. That's yeah. what got him on, jacking for beats. Yeah. He That's took right. everybody's yeah. music and, and used it How to rob. Him. How to rob. That there was you it, go. Yeah. Real life. But the first ones, you know, it's killed him, jacking for beats. Right. But it, it's just all in the art, man. It's just like if I want to go against the hardest actor on the motherfucking planet. But, and I can't because I'm that guy. But so his his quote, if I'm not mistaken, was your career is going to be dead after Snowfall. Is he that, said is, that? Is that what he said, I believe? I don't know. If he did, that means it's going to be a lie. <laughs> <laughs> but why is, uh, like, I don't even get how this materialized because to me it's no, like, why the no, fuck is 50 was, thinking about you like that, what right? What it was is... I think I said something like, if you tired of all the executive producers, all in your movie scenes, mm. trying to steal your shine, come on over to Snowfall. See, that's some shit 50 taught me. He don't even know that. That's 50, a, 50 taught that's, me a lot of things. That's, that's he doesn't a, know it. I'm paying homage to him. He should have been like, that motherfucker know what he doing. Right. And I think he really had. So when he said that, it's the obvious. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't a, I don't even know 50 as far as like personally, but I respect him as a businessman, as an artist. Right. You know what I mean? So and no hard said, feelings? No, ain't for what? I mean, hey, he, he. 50 gave me, he gave me love. He put you on the headlines for a little while there by just right. saying your name, right? Come on, man. That's what it's about. You know what I mean? Definitely. What's life like these days for you on a day-to-day -day basis? How is life? And what's important to you these days? Well, my, what's important to me these days is my, my family. Mm. And, you know, life is like a box of chocolate. Heard that. <laughs> you never know what you go get. I heard that as well, yeah. But I'm always ready and prepared for it. And um, anxious, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like in a patient way. I I'm designing this. And I I'm in full control of what I'm in control of. And what I'm not in control of, that's not my business. I don't even worry about it. 
you know, so that's how I'm moving right now. For sure. What are, what are the things that bring you the most joy in life at this point, aside from the acting? My son. How old? Eight. Eight. Yeah. You still with the mom? Yeah, that's my baby. Wow, okay. Eight. Yeah. Wow. How many years have you been out? I've been out right now. Ten? No. Because uh, I went back. I did another 18. <laughs> yeah, what was that about? I had a knife on me. And that's a no-no? No, it was For the a... For it, it was a... a, a yeah, that's a no no when you on parole. Right. And it gotta be legal. I mean it gotta be a certain So you had a machete? I had a kitchen knife. <laughs> what? Bro. Why? Doing what? Tripping. Running around the neighborhood or Yeah. Really? No. No. Barking on somebody and then the cops showed up or No, I just got into it with somebody and Right. Yeah. What was it like going back for the eighteen months? Worsted knives. Really? Yeah. Damn. Yeah, I mean, was it now, different? Like, where where was your headspace at? My headspace was that I've been there before. I know how to do it now, but why the fuck am I back up in here, man? How do you, how, why? Right. You know what I mean? When was this? I did, um, yeah. What we? What was it? Probably 2016 and 2018. Yeah. Must 20. have been brutal not seeing your kid, huh? Oh yeah. He he was up there with his mother visiting right. me, you know. But it was fucked up for him to have to see me in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, what one? What one? That's me. <laughs> oh shit. Close to having to wrap it up, but there you go. I'm ready. On the house. <laughs> no, you can keep that one. Oh, I'm keeping this mm -hmm. one? All right. I'm going to see what Riley's rolling is like. Interesting. Oh, this is Woo. <laughs> oh it's Donnie. Yeah. Well, then I definitely know what it's going to be like. Oh, yeah. You got a cannabis line or something? What's going on? Oh, yeah. For sure, for sure, man. Yeah, that's my, um, I got that original. That OG Stacy coming out there, Stacy OG. Mm -hmm. um, it's being co um, cultivated by green light growers. Okay. And uh, you know, it's a stream. I said I was in the, um, the wood. I was like, man, I should make a whole album about smoking weed. Right. But now, you know, we just coming out with our own stream. Right. Called Stacy OG, man. Dot com. You can check it out, see the cultivation, what we doing, how we doing it, sativa, um, and the indica. And you know, just man, making something out of nothing. The world has come a long way. You were probably locked down with a bunch of dudes who were in there for selling weed. Oh yeah, everybody in them. I knew motherfuckers were doing life for selling weed up in there. It's crazy as fuck, right? Crazy. But you know, it is what it ain't. It ain't what it is. Right. For sure. Well, I mean, it's good to see you in a, a good headspace and uh, having everything going smooth in, in your life and everything. You know. Appreciate that, Adam. Man. Real for sure. Life. Uh, anything else that we should know about? Anything you got going on that the world needs to know about? You know, man, just, you know, stay COG, stay tuned, stay um, supportive. Uh, stay COG.com, that's how you can get some of my merch. Um, I got a book coming out called Real Life, DeAndre mm -hmm. Bond Story. It's already written. We gonna have that. Um, transformed into a screenplay and I'm a direct executive produce it, you know, cast. I'm doing the whole thing, man. I'm tired of, you know, it's about that time. Fire. And, uh, you know, I got a little, I'm just, man, I'm making everything that I touch turn to platinum. I like you know it. What I mean? Gold, platinum. What's another precious metal? Myrrh. Merv. 
<laughs> Y'all fuck with Myrrh? <laughs> That's a cinch, right? Like, I mean, what, didn't they myrrh? bring, they brought Jesus that, right? <laughs> Frankincense and Myrrh or some shit? Hey, man, I appreciate you having me on, Adam, man. This appreciate is cool you, man. as shit, man. I wish you much Myrrh in your future. Hey, likewise, man. <laughs> <laughs> you might have to keep saying that. Mur? Mur. Mur. People don't talk about Mur enough. M- remember Nelly? Her? Would you Mur me? Yeah, Mur me. There you go. <laughs> when we make the Mur song, you could do a little line right there, like sort of mm-hmm. mix those two together. I like that. Man, Mur. Mur. All right. Um, it was great getting to tap in, man. You're a legend, and it's good to see you in a good place in your life. And it's a, it's a great tale for all the people out there. Keep your head screwed on straight and keep selling that candy. One day you're going to meet Tupac and meet a fucking agent. You sell him all the Skittles in the world and then just fucking take off. Hey, man, you're great, bro. That's my, that's my synopsis right there. Appreciate hey, you, man. Likewise. Legend. All Thank the you. time. Yes, sir. My man. DeAndre Bonds, No Jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, Patreon.com slash No Jumper. All that. Not on Instagram. No, we're on there too. And Twitter. (laughs) All of them. Like, comment, and subscribe. We're not on LinkedIn. Nojumper.com if you want to support. Nojumper.com. Appreciate y'all.